Good morning, everyone. Pastor Brent here. Uh, just wanted to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving and uh, share a little bit about that from the Word of God. Amen. So uh, I just want to pray and say, Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everyone, Lord God, that will hear this word and everyone, Lord God, that uh, um, within the sound of my voice, I pray that you would bless them, Lord God, with your presence and help them to give thanks no matter what they're going through. Um, whether it's a bad news from the doctor, uh, whether we uh, help them to give thanks, uh, no matter what it is, Father God, whether it's uh, sickness or disease, um, I thank you, Lord God, that you're greater than all of that, and that the promise of eternal life hallelujah, is enough to give thanks for in and of itself. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the crucifixion. Thank you, Lord God, for hallelujah, the sacrifice that you made for us. I pray, Father God, that you help us, uh, uh, give us the strength, Lord God, and help us to be willing to do the same, to sacrifice our lives on a daily basis in service to you. Lord, we surrender to you now. Have your way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, hope you said amen. Hallelujah. All right, so um, <clears throat> 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Um, how can I start anywhere else? Amen. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, the Apostle Paul gives a biblical command, all right? Um, and uh, this is instruction for us, but it, it has great deal of uh, effect um, on our lives uh, because he carries on this thought in um, the next text that we'll go to. But 1 Thessalonians 5.18 reads this way. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm thankful because uh, when I'm pointing to you, I'm actually looking in the camera and I see myself and I'm pointing to myself as well. I remind myself every day of the necessity to give thanks. Give thanks to God. Why? Because he's worthy. Um, but also because there is... Um, a great deal of uh, um, positive repercussion. Uh, the the effect on our life and it is very real. I'll I'll show you what I mean. Um, turn to Philippians chapter four. And I've shared this thought with you before, but I'll share it again. Philippians chapter four, and I'm going to read verses six through eight. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. Amen? The Apostle Paul says this. <clears throat> he says, Be careful for nothing, or fearful. Um, be fearful, careful, fearful, anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, that's petitionary requests, with thanksgiving, Going to God with a thankful attitude. Hallelujah. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Always, you'll always hear me every time I pray, giving thanks first and foremost. It's so important. <clears throat> Why? What's the result? Verse 7. When you go to God with an attitude of gratitude, then... It says, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, that's human comprehension, shall keep or guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. through faith in that finished work of the cross, amen? So that when you have that attitude of gratitude, you have both emotional, the heart is a reference to the emotions, the will, the intellect, the very center or the very essence of the being, which actually is in the mind. It's the seat of the mind. The heart is just used to refer to that emotional aspect where, or that center of cardia in the Greek um, and lab in the Hebrew. Uh, they're interchangeable words, mind, nous, or dianoia in the Greek. Um, and so there's, there's, they're interchangeable words. They point to the one sentient being within. Um, but uh, here you see this saying in this same verse that you'll have emotional and intellectual stability when you go to God with an attitude of gratitude. 
when you go to him, thankfully, rather than complaining, you know, Lord, uh, I just don't understand why this is happening and why that's it. You know, I could have developed that attitude a long time ago um, when the doctor told me that I had the lungs of an 84-year-old man. Um, they're probably 90 years old now. So, well, thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm just thankful, man. I'm thankful because I, yeah, how can I be anything but? How can I be anything but? Um, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm just thankful. I just thank him for everything that he's done and all that he'll continue to do. Um, uh, uh, wow, the Lord is amazing. Listen to what Paul says. He says, finally, brethren, now he wants to establish uh, a very real truth that we need to pay attention to because while we can uh, say thank you, Lord, all right, what is our mind fixed on when that recurring issue comes, when that temptation to complain comes? And it does on a daily basis. The devil will never stop. He's on his job. Be about yours. Um, <clears throat> he says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. And he's telling you to think this is a, a call to meditation on the Word of God. Because if this is a rhetorical question that has an obvious answer. Whatsoever things are honest, just, pure, lovely, good report... Anything that's virtuous or praiseworthy, you're to think or meditate upon these. So what is honest? The Word of God. What is just? The Word of God. What is pure? The Word of God. What is lovely, good report, virtuous, and full of praise? They all, the answer is rhetorical. It's the Word of God. Um... The Word of God is what we need to meditate upon on a daily basis. That when we are tempted to complain, as Paul warned, we should not do, um, then we can uh, and are equipped to remember why we're thankful and what we should be thankful about. Amen. So, um, I want to do this. While I am thankful for, of course, God's saving grace, God's mercy and kindness. Um, I'm also uh, thankful for many other things as well. Um, first, um, apart from Christ and my salvation, I'm thankful for um, the church of Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful for the body of Christ that is you all. Um, specifically, this online congregation that God has blessed me with. i never understand that in a million years. But I'm thankful that he has. And so I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful for my home and all of the other things that come along with that. Uh, I'm thankful for uh, the men that we're able to um, reach and minister to. And uh, I'm thankful, again, for you all. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for the people that are hearing this, that are seeing this right now. So, in the comments section, um, what I would like you to do is uh, um, tell me and everyone else that will read your words. Briefly, um, please don't write a book. Um, tell us what you're thankful for. Something that you're thankful for. And please, don't mention me you don't this isn't about me this is about jesus if you're you want to say something nice that's cool god bless you but give thanks and tell us what you're thankful for um and uh, know that uh, uh we're thankful for you jesus loves you i love you um in everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning you uh, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Uh, we love you. Jesus loves you. Have a great day. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name.